Brittany Cogliano, a childhood family friend. She's a nurse practitioner and aesthetic injector. And I'm here today with her at Aspire Med Spa. And we're gonna be doing some first time Botox and I'm gonna be asking her some of my questions about preventative care. So Brittany, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, so hi, like she said, my name is Brittany and I'm one of the nurse injectors here at Aspire Med Spa. So we're currently sitting in Peabody, but we have locations in Lexington and Wellesley as well. So over the past probably one to two years, I've started to notice um, some fine lines forming between my eyebrows, we usually call them the 11. We call yeah. that the glabella area, the glabella. so that's yeah. composed of three different muscles, okay. the two corrugators, which are right here, and then the center, the procerus muscle, and that's the biggest muscle that we do for preventative Botox because a lot of us are staring at a computer all day or making a very confused face. I'm definitely <laughs> guilty of that one. Yeah. So we might start to notice that we're forming some creases right in the center, like she said. We call them the 11s. Some patients will say the Harry Potter line. Yeah. You know, you can kind of come up with your own fun name for it. Botox is used in many different ways and the most beneficial and cost efficient is preventative. So that requires starting at an earlier point in our lives where, like Leah said, she's kind of noticing a line or some creasing in her makeup, which will eventually and gradually progress into that deep line that we'll see once we get older if we don't stop it from happening from the beginning. So the most important thing to also know about this is that it's called preventative Botox and we use a baby dose. So we're going at this starting low and going very slowly and it should help Leah stop these lines from forming and give her a nice smooth appearance and keep her youthful look. What are the main areas that you recommend someone to start with who's focusing on preventative care? So the most common areas that people will come in with concerns about our the 11s kind of like you mentioned before across the forehead so if you want to show people by raising your eyebrows Leah these lines right here will eventually start to deepen and then smile really big these lines on the sides of our eyes called the crow's feet one of the things that I thought was that it was actually gonna be filling in the lines and kind of um, you know tightening the muscles but what you explained to me is that it relaxes the muscles is that yeah. Correct? yeah, 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 she's right. So a lot of people think that because some people will have a really tight appearance that Botox is a tightening mechanism, but it's actually the opposite. The way it works is we inject it into the muscle and at that local area, it actually relaxes our muscle, which allows our skin to spread a little bit, kind of softening those lines, which is our goal. And so I know there's, there's a lot of common misconceptions about Botox. A lot of people think that, and you mentioned this yesterday, about why you know a lot of like older Hollywood celebrities might look botched. Mm -hmm. um, and can you explain why that's not the case with preventative care? Yeah, so there are a few reasons as to why some people might look unnatural. And it could be, you know, maybe they started too late in the process and they're trying to correct or overcorrect lines that have already deepened to a point of no return. So Preventing them from getting that deep is the goal with starting early. Another thing that people can have is facelifts or surgical corrections or the placement of threads. That also gives you a really tight and pulled back appearance, but that's not the goal with preventative Botox. So when we do Botox in the 11, or tell me the right name. The Globella. Globella. Yeah. So when we do it here, um, so it's not actually going to be correcting anything. It's just going to be preventing me from squinting, and I feel like... I'm always staring at a computer all day long, so and I end up staring at it like really hard. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna be preventing me from making that face so mm -hmm. severely and preventing those creases from forming. The goal of this is strictly to soften and to give this skin a smooth appearance. It's not to freeze our face. So Leah, after our treatment, is still gonna have some movement and she's still gonna be able to make the expressions that she always has, just not to the degree and the intensity that she's really furrowing those brows <laughs> and creating those lines, which a lot of us do subconsciously. So Brittany, I'm coming to you because I know you. I know you've been properly trained. You've educated me so thoroughly and I feel 100% confident with you. 
but how do you know that Botox is safe and how do you know that you're going to the right injector? Yeah, Leah, that's a really good question because there are a lot of injectors out there and it's important for people to do their research and you know do their homework to make sure that they're going to a reputable spa, salon, or nurse who's going to treat them. So some things that are good to know is a lot of salons offer a points program called Brilliant Distinctions and that's brought to us by Allergan who is the maker of the Botox brand of neurotoxin and they also make a lot of the fillers too so any salon that offers brilliant distinctions or where you can use those points and they talk about that is a really good sign also you always want to ask about the credentials of the injector and wonder you know are they experienced or do they follow a specific safety protocol what are they going to do if something goes that's unplanned. Also, you want to see the product. So you want to make sure that it's being mixed correctly and you want to, it's a good idea to ask, you know, can I see the vial? Because sometimes, you know, I've heard horror stories from people who have been injected with maybe a combination of different products or maybe the wrong reconstitution. So they're coming back saying, you know, I got all these units, but it's worn off a lot quicker than before. So we want to make sure that you know, you're getting what you're paying for and that the person is qualified. It'll take approximately two weeks for you to see the full results. That's really interesting. I'm so yeah. glad that you brought that up because you know, when I was doing my research, I didn't come across that until you told me that. So if I left here today, kind of didn't notice the difference, I, 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 I think I would expect to notice the difference. So I think the way that you explained it and how it works over time is really, it's good to know and it's good to have that right expectation going in that it does take about two weeks to fully see the effect. So yeah, if you want to get started, we Let's can take you guys it. into the treatment room and okay. see how it's done. Let's go. Look. We are going to go back into the treatment room. Let's do it. I'm so excited. Yeah. Brand new box. Yes. Can't even tell at all. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, do the line. This is the part where we always talk about, you know, how much are we going to use? What is the average amount per area? And with Leah, like I mentioned, it's preventative. So we're gonna start on the lower end and we're gonna do 12 units in this area right here. And if we were to do other areas today for Leah, if that's something that she decided, then we would do 10 additional units across the top. So that would be a total of 22 and then six on each side of the eye. So that would be 12 more for a total of 34. So that's kind of what somebody can look at on the lower end as a first time person getting Botox or Zeomin. Botox is kind of the tissue and Kleenex version of the neurotoxin world. It's just the brand. There are others like Zeomin, which we also have here. If you hear that at a spa, totally safe, a product that works great. A lot of patients either don't notice a difference between that or Botox or they prefer it over Botox. It's an individual choice. But today we're going to be using Botox for Leah because I have it all reconstituted and mixed up already. I did just say a really scary word, neurotoxin. What does that mean? That's a good point. And I know that that sounds really intense and really scary and of course it does. I'd be concerned if someone wasn't scared off by that word. But it's important to know that it's being delivered to a very localized pinpoint area. We're placing it exactly where we want it to go. And it is really, really small amount of product. The majority of what we're placing is just normal saline that's combined with it. So a completely brand new, fresh out of the box vial of Botox to you and I, to the naked eye, looks completely empty. So that really goes to show you how little product that we're talking about. So how does the neurotoxin work? You, I know it breaks down protein, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're placing it in a muscle that we want to relax a little bit. We want to take some of the movement away, not all of it, and a little bit of the, you know, the science behind why do we move, how do we move. We have neurons, motor neurons, that send electrical signals to our muscles, which creates motion. Okay. And 
what the Botox or the neurotoxin or the zeomin, whatever product we're talking about, is doing is it's blocking that step of the chemical signal for movement okay. from getting to the muscle. So it's doing that temporarily. And the reason why we you know wait two weeks to see a result is because already those we call them like carrier snare proteins are already made. That's yeah. how we're able to move. Yeah. But they need to you know run their course and break down but you know this product is not allowing us to create more for about three to four months of time. And people who exercise frequently, really vigorously, it's tend to me. metabolize it a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. um, so more on the three month side, maybe even sooner than that. So that's another thing to keep okay. in mind. All right, so should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so. thing is we're going to cleanse your skin okay. with an alcohol light. It's really important to get all of the debris, any makeup from last night, moisturizer, anything at all before we inject. We're going to do that twice. Now, Leah, if you could make that angry fur on your brow face for me, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, so, Leah, also important for you to be comfortable in this environment and I want you to know that this is not painful. So you'll be the judge. I know. We use yeah. the smallest possible needle for these injections. It feels almost like nothing. Some people say that they had no idea that I was even done. So others will say they can feel a little bit of pressure from we are injecting a fluid that I mentioned was mostly normal saline. So if you feel anything, it'll be the slightest little pinch, but not pain and a little bit of pressure, or you won't feel anything at all. Okay. All right, Leah, so we're ready to inject. We have our 12 units of product. Okay. And just relax, take a deep breath, and okay. here we go. You're just gonna feel a little pinch right now. And that's it. All right. How was that? It felt a little bit cold, yep. but yeah, it didn't hurt. All right, awesome. And sometimes people have a little tiny bit of bleeding, but it should be gone by the time you leave here. Okay. And again, tiny poke. Another. You can feel like that's literally the tiniest needle. Mm -hmm. All right, almost half done. So you can see that Leah has little, what we like to call blebs under her skin. That is the fluid that we just placed, but that will be gone by the time she walks from here to back to the lobby. Cool. It felt like a little like poke, but not like a pain. Yeah. All right, tiny bit here again. So that's it. That was it? Leah, so that concludes our treatment for today. Yeah, that was so fast. Not oh bad, gosh. right? No, it was literally so fast. No. So you can attest, not painful? No, not painful. A little cool, like, but it was just not, not painful at all. All right, and cool. you can kind of take a peek and you might see those blebs that I was talking about. Oh yeah, okay. Little spots of red, but okay. they'll be gone by the time you leave, like I mentioned. Wow. I'm just gonna clean you off one more time here. And Leah did really well. I you were super brave. Didn't, you didn't yeah. even flinch. I didn't. No. Yeah. So painless virtually, right? It was completely painless. It felt like a 
hardly like a little poke. Yeah. So you can see that she has a few red spots or you can tell that they're raised a bit. Okay. Those will be gone really soon. Okay. Um, by the time you get to wherever you're going next, there'll be no evidence that you're here. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So post-care instructions. Okay. Really, really important that these okay. instructions are explained to patients because we place the product exactly where we want it and we don't want it to move anywhere or to be almost broken down prematurely. So no pressing on it, no massaging the area. Okay. Remain upright for at least four hours. Okay. And no wearing tight headbands, hats, visors, anything of that nature that will kind of be tight around the forehead area. Okay. And also avoiding alcohol or Tylenol, Motrin, Advil, aspirins, ibuprofens, whatever product okay. might act as a blood thinner. Sometimes you should check the supplements people take. Those okay. also have blood thinning components too sometimes. Okay. So, And it's just about the bruising risk. So she shouldn't bruise. She had very, very minimal bleeding. I don't suspect that she'll bruise from this treatment, but those things that thin our blood could increase the risk of a bruise or prolong that bruise. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so no exercising for the next 24 hours. Okay. Good to know. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I yeah. can't wait to see how it looks in two weeks. Yes, exactly. Yep. So two weeks, she'll notice these results. And then Leah, you can come on back then if you decide that, you know, we hit it good, but you want a little bit more. Because like I said, okay. we started at the lowest minimum dose. Okay. So you That's can come true. back for okay. more. Or if you decided that you wanted to start on another area, we can do that too. Yeah. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts on where else. I know you mentioned the three main areas, but what do you recommend for me next? So honestly, this is a very individual decision that needs to be made. So all of these things are done based on what bothers you when you yeah. look in the mirror. And oftentimes what we're doing is correcting things that only you yourself are noticing. Yeah. We are usually our own toughest yeah. critics. It's true. So you're obviously a beautiful, beautiful girl. Totally. And I definitely don't think that she needs anything more, but this is a preventative treatment. Mm -hmm. right, so right, right. we all, no matter what age we are, mm -hmm. what our genetics are, we will all form deep lines and creases over time. Mm -hmm. So doing all the areas that we talked about, yeah. being the forehead as well as the sides of the eyes, the crow's feet, would be um, a great preventative treatment. Okay. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. Do you need to do that starting now? Absolutely not. Okay, but so I could wait a little bit longer on those areas? Yeah, okay. you can. You can definitely wait. You're okay. still very young. Your skin is still very young. Okay. It's glowing. And we got the area where you started to notice those kind of fine lines so yeah. when you feel that way about those other areas, then you can come on back. Okay, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, I feel good to go. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, thank yeah. you for coming. Thank you. So I feel great. I'm all set. It literally felt like nothing on my face, a little bit of pressure, but nothing at all. And I can't wait to see the results in two weeks, which I'll totally share with you guys. Um, but in the meantime, Brittany is making a special offer for us. Botox is normally $14 per unit, and if you book directly with Brittany, I'll put her contact information below, it'll be $12 per unit. Yeah. So thanks, Brittany. We're so excited. Yeah, and surprise, Leah doesn't even know about this yet, but if you book and say Leah Gardner's name, oh. or you found me through Leah, or you saw this vlog, and you really appreciated the content, and you had some questions, and you wanted to learn more, okay. you get a free hydrofacial. Really? Yeah. Woo! Which is a two hundred dollar. So contact Brittany. Yeah. yeah. So if you contact me and you specifically say that you know you got to me through Via, you'll get a free hydrofacial. It's typically two hundred dollars, and we would do that. The hydrofacial is amazing. We would do it before the Botox treatment. So make sure that you book time for both if that's something that you want to take advantage of. Okay. Awesome. I will be back for my hydrofacial. <laughs> like we've already talked about Botox or it's human being a preventative treatment, there are also some other uses for it, whether it's medical or for aesthetics, really. So some other things that people like to do that require minimal units on the face are a brow lift. So we would add a few units right here and it gives females a really nice lift. It kind of opens your eye a little bit and 
a lot of people will like to do that because if they notice they have creasing on their makeup or it's difficult to apply eyeliner oh, because okay. you know maybe they're having some skin laxity start okay. it's another way to kind of pull up this area okay so that's an option no. yeah okay. another option is some people feel like they have a droopy tip of their nose so we can put a few units two or three of botox right here in this area and that what relaxes the muscle inside there, which will just give it a small lift to the tip of the nose. Okay. Um, also, we can do what's called a lip flip. So we'll apply a few units to the muscle right here, which will increase the amount of red or pink show of our lips. So it gives the illusion of having larger lips without actually adding volume. That's so interesting. Yeah, so those are some aesthetic options. And another thing that patients will come in kind of feeling a little bit self-conscious about is that they have a gummy smile. So they'll say to me, I, you know, I, when I smile in pictures, you can see so much of my gums. And, you know, I wish that that wasn't the case. You know, how can you help? So we can use Botox. And we'll inject it right here, right around the mouth. And very small dosing. And it'll bring the top lip down a bit when you smile. It won't change the way that you look. It won't change your no face. No idea you could do that. Yeah. Wow. And it doesn't change the function of your mouth either. So you'll talk the same. Okay. You'll eat and drink the same. The only thing that will change is that when you're smiling, you won't see those gums anymore. That's so interesting. I had no idea like that you could use Botox for all of those things. Yeah. And then from the medical side, there's a use of Botox that's been you know, around for a long time. It has really positive results and the patients are often so relieved after they come in and find out that there's a treatment. So we all know those people that have really excessively sweaty underarms. We're all guilty of feeling that way here and there. Maybe if we're nervous or middle of you know, summer, middle of summer or overexcited or anxious about something, but there is a condition called hyperhidrosis where those people are experiencing that daily even when it's cold yeah. or they're not nervous about anything at all. Right, okay. But the good news is we can fix that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. With Botox. <laughs> so that treatment requires about 100 units total, 50 on each underarm. You'll come in, we'll add some topical numbing and we'll do just like we did on Leah's forehead. We'll do that in the armpit, um, but it's not felt by the patient. Important to know it's not ticklish or anything. Okay. We'll numb you beforehand, but oh, it's that makes sense. It stops the sweating. You do a lot more than just Botox, so tell me what else you do yeah. here at Aspire. In terms of other treatments that I offer here at Aspire, mm -hmm. I do dermal filler, which some people know as Juvederm or Restylane Silk mm -hmm. or any other kind of radiates Restylane product. Here at Aspire, we only use Juvederm. Okay. And the reason is because that is a hyaluronic acid mm -hmm. filler, which is a component that we have in our body naturally. So we have a reversal agent, which makes it really safe and effective and also it can last a bit longer because our body doesn't recognize it as an invader or something foreign that it needs to kind of get rid of it it knows exactly what that is we have that that's what naturally stimulates our collagen so okay. yeah there's a lot of benefits to using a hyaluronic acid dermal filler that's so cool there are, are a lot of different things that we can do with fillers whether it's the yeah, i know i have some concerns that we talked about that okay like around the um, corners of the mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Like this area. I know I have those lines and one of the concerns that came to Brittany with is, you know, what, what can we do here? Can we do Botox here? And because I didn't know, she said, no, that's where you would use a Juvederm, right? Yeah. yeah, and you know, the reason is we kind of talked about what is Botox doing? It's relaxing our muscle. Yet we have a muscle that goes all the way around our mouth, which helps us talk, eat, drink, do all the things that we like to do. Yeah and we don't want to kind of compromise that at all so the other treatments of we're placing really small like micro amounts of the product around for that gummy smile or that lip flip but we wouldn't want to do anything further down here or something that would require more units because then we would impair those other functions that we need right okay. so in that case we return to filler mm -hmm. so if somebody kind of like leah if you want to make those lines more obvious for us we yeah. can see yeah so if somebody kind of has lines from over smiling because <laughs> Leah's so happy all yes. the time so we can kind of come at that by filling not only the lip area if that's something that you wanted to do 
we can fill a little bit around here as well. And it kind of gives us a nice, smoother look. It kind of fills in those lines. And then it also brings the corners of the lip up just slightly, which is a more youthful look. Okay. And that makes, that makes total sense. And I think, you know, when I think about like the end of a long day, like where I see creases in my makeup, that's kind mm -hmm. of like where I think there are the problem areas. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can totally see that, um, how that would work. Yeah. Another common thing that people feel bothered by is these lines right here. We all have them. Yeah, I, I, I do too, yeah. yeah. And sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, no. but yeah, no, they're another bother, yeah. yeah. So, so we all have them. Some people have them deeper than others, but another thing that we can fix with filler. So we never want to take those lines away completely because like I said, it is what right. makes us look natural. Yeah. Like, we don't want to look yeah. Unnatural. We just want to look more youthful and right. well rested, honestly. So, and that's a even when we're not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even when we're not, we're fooling people with these yeah. treatments. But you know, so with filler, how do we fix these lines? Is we attack it where the problem is originating, which is from up here. So, people who are coming saying they have really deep lines here. Leah does not. I'm just using her as the model because she happens to be here, but. Lines that are really deep here on some people are caused by the drooping of our face. As we get older, we have fat pads in our face that start to deteriorate and we'll lose volume, okay. causing drooping and deeper creases. So when we add filler to the cheek area, we pull the skin right back up and create a solution to the problem from its origin instead of just going in at this area and filling it instead. I did not know that. That's so cool. Okay. Yeah. And it offers a lot of bang for your buck, as they say. So not only will it give you a nice contour, a very subtle, but a little contour and definition in your cheekbone, it'll soften these nasal labial folds, we call them. And it also can kind of lift from any area here, just slightly. Wow. Oh, yeah. So you kind of get correction or enhancement of three places. That's what I had no idea that's how you would handle these. Yeah. And also the obvious Kylie Jenner lips. Yes. So whether it's because you want more volume or you have really obvious asymmetry or you have volume loss from aging and now we have lines in our lips. Mm -hmm. um, smoking, excessive straw use, or just aging in general can mm -hmm. all be factors there. Sun exposure as well, that is a very, very big component of aging and damage to our skin. So avoiding those things and then, you know, if it's something you can't, then you can come here and we'll attack the filler, but we can do some lip filler. We can do it really naturally, or if somebody wants a lot of volume, there's other products for that. Okay. We can also do some jaw contouring. That's another thing that's been I feel like a lot on Instagram, I've been seeing yeah. pictures of people wanting more contour in their jaw area with filler. Okay, and that you use filler, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And you do it like along the jawbone, or? Yeah, so if you want to turn your head over there, Leah, we can do some filler right here, which would just create a little bit more definition while also acting by pulling back the skin a little bit here. Oh, okay, so, that's interesting. And it's important for you guys all to know that nobody needs any of this. Right. This is all stuff that we want to do. Our to little insecurities. Yeah, yeah. This is not anything that people need to do. Everybody is beautiful regardless. Aging is a beautiful thing. It's natural. We all go through this. But some people have a little insecurity about a certain thing. And if we can soften it or slow down the process, then that's why you come to me. Yeah. I'm so glad that we got the Glabella taken care of today because that was my biggest biggest concern. It was bothering me a lot over the past probably six months. Um, so I knew it was time to come in. Yeah. So I'm glad and I can't wait to see the results and hopefully I will stop, you know, making such a scowl at my computer all day long. I'll have to work on that on my myself anyway. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you for coming. It was yeah. great having you. Okay. Right. You'll have to let me know two weeks from now how you feel. I will. <laughs>